Hello everyone, here is Karam. In this video, we are gonna learn how to set up and solve a 3D turbulent fluid flow in a pipe in ANSYS Fluent. First, go and drag fluid flow fluent and then port your existed mesh file. Then from file, do save as or control S and save then double click on the setup select the number of solver processes as the number of cores in your device i will select four for now and click start now the first thing you should do is to check the mesh you can check the mesh from here or from here so you want to make sure that the reported minimum volume is a positive number now go and select scale mesh check the domain extents to see if they correspond to the actual physical dimensions if not the mesh has to be scaled with the proper units in our case the mesh was created in meter and i will click scale so these domain extents is correct and I will refresh display then click close now regarding the solver type when to choose pressure based and when to choose density based if you are simulating a compressible flow you should use a density based solver and if you are simulating an incompressible flow you should use a pressure based solver so in our case we will choose pressure based solver and also regarding the time it's a steady state case and not a transient now regarding the problem description consider a pipe of diameter 1 meter and a length of 20 meter the geometry is symmetric, therefore, we can model only half portion of the pipe. Water enters from the inlet boundary with a velocity of 0.015 m per second. The flow Reynolds number is 15,000. So, based on this Reynolds number, we will model a turbulent fluid flow. So, go to models and select viscous and then select the turbulence model. You can select K omega SST, but in our case we will select K epsilon and then the K epsilon model will be standard and the near wall treatment will be enhanced wall treatment. Try to solve it in K omega SST later, okay, and compare between the two cases. And now click OK. After that, go to physics and select the material, or you can select the material from here. Now we can go create and edit, and then select the material. Go to fluent database, and make sure the material type is fluid, then go below and select the water liquid H2O. So, to add this material to fluent, copy this material, and click close, and then click change create and then click close now after we add the material go and select cell zone conditions now this the zone that we have here now we need to assign the material for this zone so click on edit and assign the material water liquid and click apply and then close now go and select click on the boundary conditions you can click on this icon and select group by zone type now we have here the inlet and the type is velocity inlet click edit now type for the velocity magnitude 0.01 Five. Now, regarding the turbulence specification method, we have four methods. 
K and Epsilon, Intensity and Length Scale, Intensity and Viscosity Ratio, Intensity and Hydraulic Diameter. In problems like this, when you have uh, a hydraulic diameter, select the intensity and hydraulic diameter. How we can calculate or find the turbulent intensity from this formula, we can calculate the turbulent intensity 0.16 multiplied by Reynolds number to the power of minus 1 over 8. which will be 4.8 the diameter of the pipe is one meter so this is will be one and click apply and then close for the real number the real number formula is the velocity multiplied by the diameter multiplied by the rho over the viscosity if you assign the values here you will get 15,000 for the real number now go and select the outlet and make sure it is pressure outlet as a type double click on it we just need to change the turbulence specification go and select the intensity and hydraulic diameter 4.8 and the hydraulic diameter is 1 these values of turbulence parameter will be used only if reverse flow occurs at the outlet we use the default value for gauge pressure since the outlet is maintained at atmospheric pressure. So we don't need to change this value. Then click apply and close. As we said, the pressure at the outlet is the atmospheric pressure. So we define the gauge pressure as zero and then we can define the operating pressure as one atmosphere here in the operating conditions and then go to operating pressure and define it here okay and it is uh, defined by default here as one atmosphere then click ok the relationship between pressures as you can see here the absolute pressure is equal to the gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure if the pressure at the outlet is the atmospheric pressure so the gauge pressure will be zero which means the absolute pressure equals the atmospheric pressure now from solution tab select methods we have here the pressure velocity coupling algorithm how we can select the scheme we have here four schemes the appropriate pressure velocity coupling algorithm to use in ANSYS fluent depends on the type of flow and the numerical stability requirements of the simulation simple and symbolic are suitable for steady state incompressible flows with low to moderate velocities and pressure gradients. While coupled is suitable for unsteady flows with a strong coupling between the pressure and velocity fields. And BISO is suitable for unsteady compressible flows or flows with shock waves. The choice of the algorithm should be based on the specific requirements of the simulation, including the type of flow, the level of accuracy required, and available computational resources so in our case we will select symbol as it is a steady state incompressible flow problem now select second order upwind discretization schemes for momentum turbulence kinetic energy turbulence dissipation rate since the flow is not very complex, you can use high, higher order discretization schemes directly. In case of complex flows, it is recommended to obtain a converged solution using first order schemes before switching to higher order schemes. Go to initialization. You have two options, hybrid initialization and standard initialization. In this case, we will select standard initialization and compute from inlet and then click initialize now go to monitors and click on residual make sure to take print to console and plot and then we need to change the absolute criteria to 1 e minus 6 for all the equations so copy this and paste it here 
and then click OK. Now, before you click Run Calculation and uh, specifying the number of iterations, make sure to save the case file. So, in case if you want to come back and uh, repeat the solution and you want to save the settings and not repeat uh, the input data, you can just go to file and read uh, import the case file. Okay, so now go and select 400 iterations and click calculate. So as you can see, the solution converges in 173 iterations. And here we have the residuals plot. Now let us extract the results. First, we need to calculate the friction factor at the outlet. We will use the second formula, which is derived from the first one. Here we have tau, which is the shear stress on the wall. Now go to fluent and let us extract the wall shear stress. Go to results tab and select surface integrals. Then go to wall fluxes and then select the wall shear stress and then select the report type as area weighted average and then select the wall and then select compute here we have the wall shear stress now we can go to the formula we have here the tau now we need the bulk velocity at the outlet go to fluent and select the velocity at the outlet and select the report type as the mass weighted average and click compute here we have here the bulk velocity at the outlet now go to the formula here and substitute these uh, values and here we have the friction factor at the outlet we can use this value to calculate the pressure drop along the pipe now we need to do uh, another thing which is to make sure that the turbulent model that we select is correct now for this model the enhanced wall treatment the y plus should be smaller than 5 the average value for the y plus should be smaller than 5 we can calculate the y plus go to the turbulence and select the wall y plus and select the wall and select the report type area weighted average and click compute and we have here the average value for the y plus is 2.36 which means that the assumption for the turbulent model is correct now we need to define the center line to plot the variation of velocity along the axis of the pipe now from a view we can go and select the symmetry to create the full pipe click close now go to to results and create plane and here we need to plot the velocity at the center line okay now we will select the this plane the yz plane and click create and click close now go to contours and select the plane and click save display and here we have the velocity contours if we want to see it in a better way we can go to graphics and select vectors and click new and then we can select the velocity velocity magnitude and then the plane and click save display we can select the style arrow and the scale 2 and here we can see the velocity profile developed from constant velocity 
and then toward the outlet fully developed flow and as you can see the maximum velocity is at the center line and the minimum velocity at the wall so this graph shows the development of velocity along the length of the pipe and here we have finished for today thanks for watching see you soon goodbye